Coming up on today's show, Season 4 highlights today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. We are wrapping up season number four, fourth year of doing this program. And today we're going to look back on this year and give you highlights from some of our shows. So let's get into it right away. Highlights from season four of Keeping You Organized. We're going to talk about common organizing mistakes because I think if we can get over some of these basics, uh, that's going to help people get moving forward. A lot of times people just get overwhelmed, right? When you when you first meet someone and they're, you know, they're overwhelmed, they, how do I start? And you just give them some little steps to go. So how do we want to kick this off today? Well, first I'm going to talk about some things that you want to think about when you want to get organized. I'm going to talk about some things that you should be doing, and then I'm going to talk about some things that you should be avoiding. Okay. So you can get organized and stay organized. Awesome. So let's let's start then. Where where's where's step 1? Well, after after we get together and meet with you, all right? So then we've met with you know. Yes. So when setting up an organizational system, make it so it's easy for everyone else to use. Don't set it up with only you in mind. That is unless you want everyone to depend on you when they're in need of locating an item. So whether at home or work, the system should require little or no instruction for others to use. Preferably, it should be self-explanatory. That ensures everyone can easily find what they're looking for. At work, set up systems so coworkers, your boss or your assistant can easily locate what they need when you're not available. This way, if you're off of work for a sick day or vacation day, you won't get texts asking you where is something. Your office can continue functioning functioning without you and will also decrease the amount of work you have to do when you return if they can function without you there. I think there's the way that we talk to ourselves and the way that we we talk to the people that you know I would say are in our team or within our community and then the way we talk to the world all of those three different areas we really do have an effect a big effect on ourselves and the people around us in the way that we talk about ourselves and or our projects or our goals or our desires, all of that stuff is really affected by the way that you talk. Well, yeah, <laughs> so. and, and, and specifically in this podcast, we're going to talk about, uh, too, organizing, of course, you know, keeping you organized. And uh, you're a professional organizer, and uh, you go out uh, and do uh, client meetings. And give us an example of how that might work at a client meeting, how uh, negative talk can, can really affect what you do. Well, I have a a client who, um, she is really great. You know, she's very productive at work, but she hired me to kind of help her be more productive. And the long and short of it is I noticed that she's really clear and open and um, forgiving of other people in the way that they talk to her, but she isn't so forgiving of herself Mm -hmm. in the same way. So, and I do think it affects her productivity because she'll, say things that it'll slip you know she'll say things Mm -hmm. like oh that was so stupid when i did that or um and we do this all the time i mean you must i know that i have have but there's there are times when you feel like you could have done something better and instead of analyzing what it was that could have gone better you then instead berate yourself Mm -hmm. which is kind of completely pointless and it wastes time so you know the time that you're taking to berate yourself is a huge time suck and then but you're also not improving upon the process that you were working on or that the project that you're working on it maybe it could have done better so it's been done better so the next time you do it you could correct it if you actually analyze it from a more dispassionate place and ellen uh not all files are equal because some files we need to keep a long time. Others are short term. What are, what are some of those, uh, I guess, a, a category might be or types of files that we uh, have and, and how do we treat them differently? Well, thanks for coming alongside that, John, because I think there's a lot of information there that we wanted to share, too, about there's first one kind of file that I talk about that is called the reference file. Now, that reference file is the file of things that you want to have easy access to. And that's what we primarily call filing, okay? So those are the things that you might have a file cabinet for and drawers. The second type of filing I call archive. 
do or things you want to keep the duration, but you don't need easy access to. So just by pulling those two apart, you know, often I find people say, I created a filing system in 2001 and I never went back there again. So part of the things that are in that filing system are probably part of your archive files mm -hmm. that you want to move over so that you don't have to touch them. You only have them access to them when you need them, which hopefully you won't. But the rest of your filing, I like to call reference. So it's something that you want to refer back to within like a year or so. And Julie, welcome. I mean, you've heard of this debate before, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. And it, it's not even just a debate, but it's it's sort of the wellspring of fear that people have about anxiety, making the wrong choice or being left behind, the only person still using a paper calendar. And, you know, you wouldn't think it would be such a big deal. And you're right. It, it is an age old question if it, we're talking about the information age. That's right. Well, you know, we go to trade shows and we make file folders which are made out of paper and we still do billions and billions of file folders every year. So there's got to be uh, still a demand for it out there. Oh, absolutely. Paper isn't going away. In fact, I think probably the only area I see where people aren't still producing a lot of paper is photographs just because people have their photos on their phone. But in almost every other case, we still see a lot of paper out there in the organizing world. Okay, so a lot of times when I work with people, they do have a calendar and they have some sort of system for tracking appointments, but they find themselves still being very reactive instead of being proactive. So these tasks are coming up all the time and they're scrambling and they're trying to, um, they, they still feel like they're a little bit out of control even though they're using a calendar. So they might have their three appointments that they have during the day. And then the rest of the time is just putting out fires or you know they're just running around. There's no strategy to it at all. So um, to move to the next level, would be actually scheduling your task in your day and being more proactive than reactive because then you feel like uh, you're getting the things done that you're supposed to be getting done and then um, and uh, going from there. Deb, welcome back to Keeping You Organized. Always happy to be here. Thanks for having me again. Great. Well, you know, we're going to challenge people a little bit today about productivity because that's the, the overarching theme. Every Just about everybody wants to be more productive, but, you know, some people think if they get that magic app or, you know, or they use their tried and true paper system or whatever it is, um, and I think we're going to kind of cover all of that today. We want to really get in, inside of productivity and, and maybe even for someone who has never even started before. So yeah. what is like, what are some of the high level points about productivity when you're meeting clients for the first time who say, I, I just need to be more productive? Well, I think it's important for us to really be realistic and think about what's really working well what is it that you are just knocking it out of the park and it's working because we want to keep that and then we have to look inward too and say well okay what's just falling apart where are the holes where am i falling down what am i not meeting what are those expectations that i have for myself or maybe that others have for me and what is it that i need to fix so rather than going out and buying the next best planner or going out and getting the next best app we first have to figure out, well, what is the problem? Where are we? And then we sort of plug in the holes and figure out where we are. So that would be step number one. You know, I think everyone pretty much has the same thing. We get this deluge of email and, it, and it's very difficult to manage. So what we want to try to accomplish in this podcast is what can we do to make email easier in our life? How's that challenge? I, I think I'm up for it, and there are definitely some specific steps people can take. So let's let's dive in. Okay. Well, we've got five tips, so let's start with number yep. one. Yep. So the first um, the first step that somebody could take is to reduce the volume coming in. And a lot of people really feel like they don't have control over an email that it just comes at them, and um, that they don't have any impact over what comes in. But it's not true. There are some things that anyone can do. Um, the first is to unsubscribe from emails that you get that you no longer want or find value in. So newsletters, uh, you know, advertisements, 
um, that sort of thing. We can go down to the bottom of if they're uh, sending them in a compliant legal way and click on that unsubscribe button. Uh, there are also services, one called unroll.me that can help you manage all those subscriptions mm. and to bulk and um, subscribe to uh, you know any content that you're not finding value anymore. So that's one thing to help reduce that volume coming in. You're in the middle of the highlights for season four of Keeping You Organized. Uh, we're gonna get back into more highlights from this season, but we're gonna take this commercial break first. Now there's a place just for you. Life can be busy and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you. Your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. Myorganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. Myorganize.life. We are back now and keeping you organized. Looking at season four, our fourth year of doing this show. Now, uh, we are going to continue now looking at some of the highlights from shows in this past year on season four highlights of Keeping You Organized. Gerilyn, how are you doing today? Doing great, John. Thanks for having me back. It's always a good time. Well, good. I, I, I hope you're here. You know, this is like going to be a little one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I think a lot of people, um, do you run into people that have this issue of just always being a little late? I work with these people and I have friends with these, this, uh, chronic lateness issue and I have relatives and there's just all kinds of people that just can't seem to ever get there when they need to be. Yeah. And you or know, I, have... I think part of it is not like, you know, I, I think about going to church on Sunday. I mean, I get up really early. I mean, I have several hours to get ready, but we are always like walking in like two or three minutes, you know, during the first song and because it drives everybody crazy. So I'd like to deconstruct some of that uh, on, this, uh, on this episode today and talk about, you know, what's behind all this anyway? What's the, what's the baseline, uh, uh, you know, facts behind someone who, who, who acts like this? Well, let's, let's start with a few, let's use your church example, because that's as good as any that we're going to get, right? It's a real life uh, example. Yep. So the first thing I want to know is, how realistic are you when you estimate how long things will take? So you know that you get up hours early. What are you doing? What do you spend your day doing? Drinking coffee, reading the news, putzing around your house, walking your dog. I mean, what are you doing exactly? Think about those tasks, then estimate how long those things take you realistically. And a lot of people with something like, you know, going to church or a play or whatever, is they underestimate the amount of time that finding a parking space will take or what they're gonna find to wear, you know, pick out what they're gonna wear. So that's where I start the process. Let's see if you have a realistic expectation of how long things actually take you. Yep, so we talked about having a basket full of tasks, about 10 minutes each, every night at about the same time, every night, maybe, nine o'clock or you know before you sit down to watch television and relax that you just choose uh, a task out of that basket and you do it mm -hmm. and um you know you kind of get that done a little bit d done each day get you a little more organized than the previous day and veronica welcome back uh, we survived the pack right hey, that, that yes. rhymes welcome back we survived Ooh. the pack <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, now we're getting ready. Uh, we've, we've got the boxes loaded on the truck and they're heading over to the new place. And you, your company, Organizers Northwest, really works with a lot of people on move. So we're going to tap into your experience here for uh, what we do when we get to the new house now or the new apartment or wherever you're moving. And how do we unpack with ease, I guess? Let's, what's the first step? Well, um, wear good shoes. That's my first tip. Okay, that's a great tip. <laughs> when we do unpacking jobs, they're usually eight-hour stretches, um, and you're exhausted by the end of the day. So being prepared, you know, physically is really big. Wearing the right shoes, 
um, and drinking lots of water and having food nearby. I know it sounds kind of silly, but we, we have to tell our clients to remember to drink water because hmm. you just get so overwhelmed and you know, there's a lot going on. There's movers running around and you're tearing into boxes and people forget. Hmm. So the third organizing challenge that um, is something that I encounter frequently with clients um, are emotions. Mm. And so, you know, I'm not talking about organizing emotions, but I'm talking about the kind of challenge that comes up when you are organizing. Mm -hmm. And particularly with the demographic of clients that I work with, which tend to be those really struggling with the organizing piece, mm -hmm. um, they have very strong emotional attachments to their things. Mm -hmm. And particularly um, if someone has experienced grief or loss, then that attachment can be even stronger, making it hard to let go. So I have some strategies about how one would work with um, emotions if that's coming up during an organizing session. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure you deal with this. Again, these tips, of the, uh, we talked about this in the last episode, are, are things that your clients have been struggling with in the last uh, year. So these are all current kinds of things. So how Absolutely. would someone deal, deal with that? So one of the things is that um, when emotions come up, you just want to acknowledge that they're there. You're not trying to push them away. You're not trying to discount them. Let them, let them surface because um, that's very much an important part of organizing if it's an emotional experience. Mm -hmm. It's just part of what it is. So just accept it for that. One thing I like about, I talk to a lot of different professional organizers. Everybody has their own method and technique. There are some mm -hmm. universal, you know, kind of principles. And I think we even find that in this method. We You know, that's absolutely that. it. The book is full of things that I can agree with yeah. in principle. Yeah. But it might be the actual action that I don't. Yeah. So where I get concerned, and I think because you know organizers, you right. get this. We are a passionate bunch. Oh yeah, and we are really protective of our clients. Yes, because we deal with a lot of people who, for years and years, have been unsuccessful yeah. in being organized and feel like failures. And so, if you have someone who makes you um, feel ashamed mm. or guilty because of not being successful with her yeah. method yeah. Um, or not following it, not feeling like it's the right way to go, yeah. I, I think that can do damage. There, yeah. There's a danger there yeah. that people's you know, fragile egos can really yeah. get hurt. Their self-esteem can be uh, hit and, and really yeah. I think damaged. So I think that's one of the things that differentiates. And you're right, you could give the same project to 10 different organizers and it's not gonna come out or happen in exactly the same way for any of those 10. Uh, email management is something everybody has to deal with unless you just don't have email, mm -hmm. uh, which there aren't too many people that mm -hmm. have that. So no. uh, let's start at a, a very uh, a, a basic, uh, maybe even have, do, do you have any stats or do you know what people, um, you know, how many average emails someone gets a day? I know I get hundreds, but. You know, I don't know, like an average. I would say for our clients, it is not uncommon that they'll say they have, um, you know, they could have like 20,000 emails in their inbox, which isn't necessarily what they receive. But again, you and right. I are like, oh my gosh, the overwhelm you they would let, feel, they, 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 they let it accumulate. accumulate. And right. we can talk about why yeah. that's not a great strategy. Right. Um, but typically I would say our clients will say anywhere from you know 50 to 300 emails a day, yeah. which okay. that could be a problem with the company and the over communication because right. email's so easy, yeah, right? So there's, there's other issues outside okay. of just the person. So how do we start? Let's just say, uh, and, and let's talk about how email does keep you from getting your most important things done. Sure. How, how does that happen? Yeah, so it's, there's a couple areas. So one, you know, we talked about in the last section the, the importance of having your focus time. And right. we'll often have clients say, you know, Jan, I did it. I blocked the calendar. I told nobody to schedule appointments or knock on my door. And I sat down to do my work, but, um, but I kept hearing the ping. Yeah. Right, the ping yeah. of the of the um, the email, or there's even something called phantom texting right now, where people think they hear the ping of their text oh, and no. they don't. Oh boy! So, but what's happening is there's two. What do you, there's two reasons that we can't avoid the ping. Do you have any idea what those two reasons would be? I don't know. It probably has something to do with Pavlov's dog and his experiment <laughs> of ringing the bell, but I don't know. Well, no, that's I'm, funny. Yeah. But yeah, maybe yeah. So two typical reasons. One is we are unbelievably social animals. Mm. So we want to know what's going 
going on. It's the yeah. reason Facebook is a billion dollar business, yeah. right? People want to know what's going on. The second part of it is um, whenever we cheat and do something we're not supposed to do. So let's say you've closed your door, you need to be doing your strategic plan yeah. and you hear the ping. So you're like, oh, I want to go cheat. Your body literally releases dopamine. Oh. So you get a mini high. <laughs> okay. So it is really, it makes perfect sense why email is addictive because right. we get mini highs every time we cheat. Right. So there's a good reason that you have to, you know, turn off the notifications, get out of your office, turn off your yeah. phone. And people sometimes think, I cannot do that. Yeah. But it is really, it takes an extreme amount of discipline to ignore the ping. Well, there's a lot more to season four than what we've shown or listened to today, but uh, I'd like to encourage you to go to smeed.com slash podcast, and you can see all of our shows over the last four years and uh, choose some topics that you like. And coming up next time on Keeping You Organized, we head into season number five. Come back for that, and we'll see you next time on Keeping You Organized.